Hello everybody and welcome to finally see something about Gargantua. Here she is just resting outside of the runway so we can have a final look at it before we get it into... What's that? Okay guys, I kinda pulled a fast one on you. This is Gargantua 2. It is bigger and longer and better and, well, it has less air intakes than the original. Since some of you kind of mentioned, hey, there are so many air intakes, it looks like an SSTO. I thought, yeah, well, I don't really need that many air intakes. Then I started fiddling about with it and in the end, I came up with something that's 91 meters long, has 11,000 meters per second of delta V, and looks a little bit more awesome. Here we're trying to get the center section into orbit, which alone weighs, well, almost about, or even more than, I can't remember, it, at least it weighs very much above 1,000 tons. And we need a lot of boosters for that, so I created my patented ha ha vector booster system, which is basically just a Kerberdyne S3 medium tank with seven vector engines at the bottom, with the gimbal reduced on the outer vectors, so yeah, it doesn't wobble too much around. Okay, final booster separation, well, almost final. And here we have some rhinos finishing the job of circularizing that big bad ship carcass. Okay, there we go. It looks perfectly fine. We're now in an orbit of about 72 kilometers above Kerbin. Perfect. Okay, now, but this is just the hull, basically, so this is the main section, and I was trying to just get rid of those boosters, and, well, it seems nothing of importance on the main ship exploded, so that's good. And, well, now it's time to bring the rest up to orbit. So, here we have the nacelles, which house a lot of the reaction wheels, they house the solar panels, radiators, and of course a lot of fuel, uh, which is also situated inside of those, um, what do you call them, wings. Okay, separating the first boosters, there we go. If you have noticed, I'm using flea uh, solid rocket boosters as separatrons. And here we have the first burn completed, so we're not cruising towards the apoapse, there you can see my vector array. And now we're circularizing this big bad thingy here. Okay, we already have the solar panels extended so we can gather up some more electricity because those reaction wheels in there really, really drain the power. Okay now, time to fit that thing onto the hull. So we decouple it from the transport vehicle and we activate our RCS system, which are basically those um, Werner engines. And then, yeah, we're going to go over to the main ship, well, the main part of the ship, and get it done with it. Okay, I'm going to skip ahead during this process because the docking really took its time and... I'm pretty sure you have better things to do than me just fine-tuning some docking maneuver. Okay, now heading towards... Heading towards that main ship. Main body, rather. And yeah, I'm going to skip ahead now, so this is really taking a long time because I have to fiddle around with it because the center of mass... Well, I'm not using that RCS build aid mod, so I kind of guesstimate where I should have to put my RCS thrusters or runner engines in this case. And sometimes it works out really good and sometimes it works out not that good and in this case it was kind of medium thingy. But yeah, we got a dock with the main ship part. 
And yeah, time to get the second nacelle over there. Come on, move out. There we go, setting target using my trusty docking port alignment indicator mod for bringing that over there. This looks like kind of, well, some kind of weapon out of Star Trek, some kind of Klingon knife or short sword thingy. What's it called? The mechlet or something? I don't know. What's your thought on this shape? Let me know in the comments. Okay, heading towards the docking port, once again skipping a little bit ahead. And now we're on our final approach to combine. Feels a little bit like Voltron. Maybe I should have made this thing lion head shaped or something. Okay. We have a perfect dock with everything, and this thing is slowly taking shape. A peculiar shape, but shape nonetheless. Okay, time to get that huge rocket, well, out of the way, basically, because I don't need any space debris cluttering up my orbit. I'm a bit proud of, well, how I managed to get all those things up there, because those transfer vehicles are used to get, well, transfer launch vehicles are used to get all the stuff for Gargantua into orbit. Well, almost none of them had more than 4000 meters per second of delta V. And I still managed to get into orbit and also get a rendezvous every time. So yeah, I kind of got better at that. Earlier in Kerbal Space Program, older versions, and when I was still learning how to do that, I kind of had to use 5,000, 6,000 meters per second of delta V to even be able to get a rendezvous with anything because I used up so much. And now I destroyed something. I really hope it was just the scaffolding that was used to transport this thing. Okay, let's get out of there. Let's, let's not destroy this here. Okay, wobbling around a bit. Yes, there's enough clearance. Now get out of here, you crazy, crazy dog thingy or whatever. Okay, now we're free of the debris. And well, let's take a first look. Let's extend those solar panels so we have power over there, up there, and bask in the magnificence of the unfinished ship. Okay now, time to get the next pieces. And the next pieces are the crew section. So this consists basically out of some, well, cockpit and some crew compartments, some science bay and also, well, science lab, science bay, science lab, I don't know, the lab, and also some science equipment for getting some experiments done. Of course, we will never get this thing on any surface, probably. So, yeah, we're not going to get any surface samples with this. And I've skipped ahead to the rendezvous itself. I'm using Kerbal Engineer to estimate the time until the shortest distance. You can see the number in the lower right hand corner, the last line of the readouts. So the closer that number gets to zero, the closer I am to the encounter, of course. Okay, and now we are at the rendezvous point. Please keep in mind that everything you see here has been sped up four times. So, yeah, I've really, really suffered through a lot of lag with this maneuver, but you have to keep in mind, Gargantua itself has almost 1000 parts, well, Gargantua 2 actually, but let's, for the sake of time, let's just call it Gargantua, because the first one never really flew anyway. Okay, now heading out with the first attachment, after I have performed a small roll with Gargantua herself, herself, itself, well, with the ship. And we're already in position, coming in a little bit too close, we're not really aligned on the roll axis. 
and yeah. That equated to me not completely docking with one of the ports, you can see it wobbling around, so I had to undock and do it again. Yay, fun. If you don't like docking, don't build big spaceships in orbit. I thought during the build process that maybe with the right booster configuration I could have brought it up into orbit in one single launch. But where would be the fun of that, of putting a payload of 2500 and something tons into orbit now, wouldn't it? Okay, time to get the second crew section over there. Redundancy, yay! And now once again my Werner engine scaffolding construction thingy firing up and getting it closer to Gargantua. Well, it is a part of Gargantua, so we're getting closer to completion with every item that we add to those many, many docking ports. Okay, now almost time to get connected. And boom, there we go. Very nice, very nice. Okay, now once again time to get rid of some of the debris lying around over here. Let's start with the rocket motor hanging around at the side of Gargantua. And let's say goodbye to this. Time for a fiery and quick death in the atmosphere. Okay, scroll a bit ahead to the sunny side of Kerbin, so we can actually see what's going on here. And now it's time to get those RCS scaffold. I'm always saying RCS because, well, even though the part is called a Werner engine, it is in fact a reaction control system, because you have to kind of control where that thing goes with it. So I'm calling it an RCS scaffolding. So there you go. Okay, the other one also deorbiting, and yeah, we're almost done with building the ship, or at least building the parts that make up the main ship. So, one more launch to complete that. There we go, this is going to be the front section. It looks a bit weird, but in my experiments this was the only way to, well, get it into orbit safely and attach it properly. There we go, we've detached all of those nose cones and we've circularized already. And now at Gargantua's carcass. We're burning a bit to match velocities, there we go. Target velocity matched, it's a bit tricky to maneuver this ridiculously shaped thing, but yeah, there we go. And we have now time to decouple it from the launch vehicle and get it over there to Gargantua. It's a bit far away for my taste, but yeah, I'm gonna manage. I think I, think I have enough fuel left in those tanks. And... By the way, the entire thing, Gargantua itself and every part I bring up, every fuel tank is filled to the brim with liquid fuel. Liquid fuel only, of course, because Gargantua uses nuclear engines. And quite a lot of them, actually. It's about 28, if my calculations are correct. 28 nuclear engines are firing up this beast. And I think it's probably not enough to make a significant move at that weight of 2500 tons. Okay, now a lot of docking ports. We have to add seven docking ports to be exact. Three on the far outside, three in the center and the big one in the center. There we go. Let's check if those are docked. This is looking good. Yes, yes, yes. Let's get around. Did I get everyone? Did I get every docking port? I guess so. So yeah, we have a good dock with the main ship. So basically, the building of Gargantua is complete. Only thing left is get rid of those pesky little scaffold thingies. And okay, I 
accidentally hit time accelerator and now I have to wait until it has passed through the ship. Because if I would now stop time acceleration, everything would explode. And we don't want that. You are going to head down into the atmosphere as well and burn up as you should. And now it's time to have a kind of beauty shot style look at my biggest creation yet. As I mentioned, it is 91 meters in length. I have no idea how wide it is, but it is really wide. It weighs more than 2,500 tons and well, the readout says 9,800 something uh, meters per second of delta V, but in the space plan hangar I had it at almost 11,000. So I don't know what happened here, but I know I have enough fuel, so maybe I'm just going to transfer it around after the first burn or something. Okay, now using sunlight to get a better look at it. There you go. Look at you, baby. Nice. Totally impractical, but nice. Okay, we have the science equipment over here. We have an antenna, so we can communicate any science if we so desire. We have some small docking ports over here and in the bottom, there we go. We have our small cargo bays in the front. Yes, I'm going to use those for something. And now we have the main cargo bay, which is basically four giant cargo bays in pair docked together, well not docked together, placed together, and the door is just opened to 50%. So this enables me to get a 3.75 meter tank in and out of the cargo bay. So let's see what this thing is capable in the next episodes. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.